This tutorial is a quick start guide for SketchUp, so you can start 3D modeling very quickly. When you open up SketchUp, you're greeted with a welcome screen and you need to select a template. The template will choose things such as the styles and the way SketchUp looks, as well as your default units. You basically have a choice between inches and meters or smaller units. I'm going to start with this simple template. Now we are in SketchUp. You'll notice quickly that there are axes. We have a green axis, which is horizontal, a red axis, which is also horizontal, and the blue axis, which is in the vertical direction. Across the top, we have some default tools. We can also see more tools by going to Tools, View, Tool Palettes, Large Tool Set. So this is a great thing to do because it shows you more of the tools that you may want to use. So if this is not visible, just go View, Tool Palettes, large tool set. First, let's talk about how we can orbit around SketchUp. So if you look over in the large tool set, you'll see this orbit button. If I click on it, then I can use my left mouse button and I can orbit around like this. So we can see that the person in the horizon line is changing. If I grab the little hand here, this pans back and forth. So this isn't orbiting, it is just moving the image up and down. I can also choose this magnifying glass, and if I click and drag, the image will zoom in and out. But this is very cumbersome to keep coming back over here. So instead, I can use the middle mouse button to orbit. I can hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan, and then I can roll the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. And this is great because if I have my mouse here, it will zoom in on the person's head or if I hold my cursor here, it will zoom in on the foot. So this can be a great way to orbit around, and it's important to get comfortable with that orbiting. You can use SketchUp with a trackpad and a laptop, but it is much better with a mouse. Next, let's get started with drawing some shapes. Over here in the tool palette and on the top, you'll notice that there is a rectangle tool. I can click and draw a rectangle. Drawing in SketchUp is a little bit different than you may be used to. In SketchUp, we want to click, let go of the mouse button, then move the mouse, then click again. So once again, I'll click, let go of the mouse button, then draw again. Practice drawing some rectangles. You'll notice when I draw the rectangle out, it has a blue box. If I use my arrow keys, I can press right, and now I have a red box. This rectangle is on the green axis. If I press the left arrow key, I can draw on the green axis just like this. So you can use the axes to decide where you want your pieces to be drawn. Rectangles are one of the most basic units in SketchUp. And then to make something 3D, we can use the push-pull command. We can use the keyboard shortcut of P, or we can click over here on the tool palette. It's right here. So if I hover over one of these rectangles, I can click, let go of the mouse button, then pull up. Click, let go of the mouse button, click again. In SketchUp, it's often click, release, move, click again. This is not always true, but it is often. So the push-pull is a wonderful way to quickly make and edit 3D geometry. One nice thing about the push-pull tool is we have modifier keys. So here I'm pushing and it's extending the shape. But if I press Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, I can extend this shape and it creates this extra geometry. And now I can move these shapes independently. This is a toggle, so you notice that it keeps making new geometry. When I press the Option key again, you'll notice that plus mark disappears. So now I'll go back to just regular push-pull. And then if I press the Option key again, I can then pull these out and create more geometry. So that's a great way to quickly make geometry that didn't exist before. Now how do we clean up our scene? We can do that by using the selection tool and dragging across and then pressing delete. The keyboard shortcut for the selection tool is the spacebar. This is a good one to memorize because it's often used. We can also press R for rectangle. Once again, you can click it on the tool palette over here. Let's draw a rectangle. 
Notice when I click at the origin, I have a snap. So that means I'm snapping out from the origin. And then I'm going to go ahead and release the rectangle. I'll press P to push pull. And now I have a box. Let's draw another rectangle, but I want to show you something. When I click and draw the rectangle, if you look at the lower right hand side of the screen, we can see the dimensions. So we can tell how big this rectangle is. And if I want it to be a specific dimension, I can type 10 feet, comma, 10 feet, and then I can press enter. So now this is a 10 foot box. And I can also use that for the push pull. So I can pull up and type 10 feet. And now I have a 10 foot cube. This is very convenient for making different measurements. And if I want to push pull out this way, press option, I can type out two feet. And now I have a two foot section out on this cube. And then I can come up here and type two feet again. And now I have a two foot ridge. Right now, all this geometry is ungrouped. For example, if I push pull this edge and then I snap it to this edge, and then I try to push it back, notice how it's connected. So it became one piece of geometry and I can't separate it. So as I have these pieces intersect each other, it can become very messy. Sometimes this is the desired behavior, but sometimes you want to keep things separate. So let's look how to do that. I'm going to press the space bar, then I'm going to highlight this, and then I'm going to draw a new rectangle. This time I'll start at the origin, I'll draw a rectangle, I'll press P, click, release, click again. And now I want to press the space bar. And if I double click on a face, it selects the face and the edges. If I triple click, it will select all of the faces and edges. You see here, now it has all the faces and edges selected. And then I can right click and make a group. You can also use the modifier key of control or command and press control or command G and this will group. Now, if I double click on this, notice that I go inside this group. We can see the bounding box of the group. If I off click from that bounding box, I'm outside the group. Let's draw another rectangle. I'm gonna draw a rectangle here. I'm gonna press P and pull this up. And now if I push pull, I can push pull this and snap right to that point. But now notice I can't push pull on this group because this is inside the group. So what I need to do is press space bar, double click, and now I can click on this face and I can push pull. I can push pull and go past this shape and it's not connected. Whereas before when we did that, it was connected. So for example, let's, let's go ahead and move over and we'll draw two rectangles really quick just to show you the difference one more time because this is one of the most important aspects of SketchUp is grouping. So I have this rectangle and then I'm gonna draw one more rectangle and then I'm gonna push pull up. And then if I pull this one across, these will now intersect. You see how it attaches this geometry because these bottom planes connected. Sometimes you want that behavior, sometimes you don't. Whereas with this one, I have to go inside the group, press P, and then if I go back, it does not create this geometry right here because they are separate entities. And notice how everything but this group is grayed out and how the bounding box changes size as I edit the group. So groups are very important in SketchUp and there'll be ways that you can use groups to organize your models and things like that. So I'm going to delete all of these things here and let's do one more thing. So we can also create circles. So if I go ahead and click here, click release, click again, then I can press P and pull that circle up. I can also draw another circle somewhere on top. I can press P and make an indent. When you're using push pull, if you go all the way to the other side of a square object, you see how it's snapping right there, it will make a hole through the object. So let's try that with a rectangle. So let's get a rectangle and we'll draw a skinny rectangle. Then we'll press P, pull this up, 
And now let's draw a rectangle by pressing R and then press P. And when I go forward just a little bit, it will leave an indentation. But if I go all the way to this edge, then it makes a hole in the rectangle. This brings us to another powerful feature of SketchUp, inferences. This is referencing other pieces of geometry in the model. For example, if I want to draw a rectangle, I could draw it anywhere in space, but what if I wanted to line up with the edge of this rectangle? I can hover here, and then if I pull out, notice that red dotted line, that means I'm inferencing that point. So now my rectangle will start there. And then if I want it to end over here, I could snap to that point. So now I have a rectangle that's exactly that size. If I want to have my rectangle reference this point, I can inference from that point and draw my rectangle there. And now I know that these are perfectly in line. There are three main reference points in SketchUp. Right here, we have an endpoint. We have on edge. And in the middle, you get this blue one and that's the midpoint. So I know that's exactly the middle of that line. Now watch how this changes. If I click and draw a line across to the other midpoint, now the midpoint is right here. So this is an easy way that you can divide shapes up evenly. Now I have a new midpoint here. So let's use these skills to make a small model very quickly. I'm going to drag and select everything to delete. And then I'm going to use a rectangle and we will make a quick house. So I can draw my rectangle out any size I want. I can press P to pull the house up. And then let's use the line tool. It's right here, this pencil, or you can press L on the keyboard. And I'll draw from the midpoint to the midpoint. And then I'm going to press spacebar to select this line. And we're going to introduce a new tool. Here we have the move tool. So if I click on this line, I can move it to the side or anywhere I want, and it will create new geometry. So I can make an interesting warehouse house, or I could pull it out over like this to make an interesting house. Or if I want it to go straight up, I can undo that and watch what happens when I pull this up. You see how it has that blue line? That means I'm on the blue axis. I can come all the way over here and move it on the red axes. So I want to move it straight up on the blue axes so I have an even house. Try to make your own house and modify it as you see fit. In the next video, I'll show you some new tools that you can use with SketchUp.